Hi guys and welcome to today's video on linear equations, a continuation of our methods three and four course. Now if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Linear equations and all the work I'm going to deal with simultaneous equations and all that type of stuff are universal, but otherwise these all tied to the Cambridge Essentials course over here in Australia. Good to see you if you're here in Australia. Uh, now, by the end of the lesson, I want you to be able to manipulate all sorts of equations, but more importantly, understand how to use your CAS calculator to find uh, the solutions to simultaneous equations and how to deal with fractions, that, that thing that really throws people. Now, if you haven't already done so, could you do me a favor? Over in that corner is a little doohackey uh, that allow you to subscribe. Um, subscribing to my channel is great because it just lets me know that I'm actually doing this for a reason and not sitting here talking to myself. Um, it also is great uh, to know that uh, hopefully uh, you're being helped. Um, but I've got here a recap. I mean, why do I write that? There's no point with a recap because we've actually just started this. So let's go back to linear expressions. Some of you guys have been doing it literally since about year eight, probably earlier. Um, and the most basic form of linear expression is the one shown here. Now, in this situation, we have two terms with pronumerals, one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. And the point of it is we want to actually uh, put them all onto the same side, the left-hand side or the right-hand side, uh, to then sort of collect like terms and to simplify it to find my value of x. How do we do that? Well, we have to choose the side which has the greatest number of polynomials, and I suppose in that situation that would be 4x. So I'm going to write my question out and have that 4x minus 6 is equal to 3x plus 5. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my 3x over to my other side there. So I'm going to get 4x minus 3x minus 6 is equal to positive 5. Collect like terms gives me x minus 6 is equal to 5. And then add 6 to both sides. x is 11. Life is good. Thank you very much. Nice and easy. Yeah, we've been doing that. You're right. Why am I watching this video? I know. I'm getting to the exciting stuff, the stuff with fractions after just this. This example throws brackets in. It's all in one line. How many unknowns do I have? I've got just one unknown. That just that x. So it's a case of multiplying out the brackets, collect like terms, and Bob's your uncle. Now, if Bob is your uncle, awesome. Uh, if not, my apologies. Uh, Bob's not my uncle either. I don't know where the expression comes from. So we've got 4, 3, minus x, minus 3 lots of 4 plus 2x in brackets is equal to 20. And brackets are so, so important. Right, so let's multiply that out. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times minus x is minus 4x. Minus 3 times 4 is minus 12. A minus 3 times 2x is minus 6x. There we go. Lovely. Collect some like terms. Well, we know that 12 minus 12 cancels. Minus 4x minus 6x is minus 10x is equal to 20. Divide both sides by negative 10. And x becomes equal to minus 2. There we go. Nice and easy. Yep. Then we get to what I suppose everyone would say would be their nemesis. Uh, linear expressions with fractions. Now, as far as I'm concerned, fractions, yes, they look gross. But the great thing is you can undo a fraction really, really easily, and that's by knowing what the denominator is. If you don't like the denominator of a particular fraction, then multiply absolutely everything in that expression or that equation by the denominator. Easy, literally. It might add two more steps of working, but if you got the question right, then life is good. So here is an example here where we have 3x on 4 minus 4 is equal to 17. Now here, I don't want it. That divide by 4, I don't like. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to multiply absolutely every term by 4. But I have to be careful to make sure that I multiply that as well. Strangely, the number of people who forget to multiply what is after that equal sign is actually quite frightening. So fingers crossed you won't be one of those people. So multiplying absolutely everything by 4, well, that makes that just 3x. Because if you remember, 3x on 4 times 4 on 1, they cross cancel, they effectively become ones because I divide the top and the bottom by four. I get three x times one over one times one, which is three x. So that's three x, but now we multiply the four by four, which gives me 16. And the 17 times by four is 34, 68. Now you'll notice I've just got a one line equation. So I now add 16 to both sides. So three x is equal to 70, 84. And I now divide that by three. So 84 divided by 3 goes 2, and 3s into 24 go 8, so I get 28. All right, lovely. And it works. It doesn't matter how many fractions you have. You just need to keep adding in those individual stages. So here's an example with two fractions. 
there are a number of ways of doing this, um, but let's do it the longhand way first. So we've got two on three x minus one is equal to three on seven. So first things first, there is a denominator of a fraction, three x minus one. So I'm gonna multiply absolutely everything, both sides, all the terms by three x minus one. So that's gonna leave me two on that side because the three x, the divide by three x minus one is gonna eliminate. I got three on seven and we're gonna times that and we must put it in brackets to make sure that we multiply everything inside that bracket by what's outside. And you're gonna say, well, that still looks disgusting and I couldn't agree with you more. I now have that divide by seven that I need to get rid of. Well, that's okay because all I need to do now is multiply both sides by seven, which will give me two times seven is equal to three times three x minus one. What do you notice now? One line, one line, both with just the same prime numeral and some basic math to allow me to do that. So two times seven is 14, is equal to three times three x is nine x minus three. So add three to both sides, give me 17 is equal to nine x. So x is equal to 17 on nine. And so that's one way to do it. Alternatively, you can cross multiply where you have two on three x minus one is equal to three on seven. Now, when I say cross multiply, if you have a fraction equals a fraction, then you can literally cross the denominator on one side to the numerator and vice versa. And what I mean by that is, this divide by seven becomes two times seven, and that divide by three x minus one becomes three times three x minus one. So all I've done is shortcut. But again, the problem with shortcuts is if you use them incorrectly, it all crashes and burns. So if I continued, again, that would be 14 is equal to nine x minus three. And again, we'd end up with x is equal to 17 on nine. Now you may remember way back in year 10 or earlier, solving simultaneous linear equations. And actually there are so many ways of doing this. Now the point of it is when you're solving simultaneous linear equations, you're looking at two straight lines and where they cross on a graph. Hence, there is a common x value and a common y value to both of those equations at that one point and that one point only. Now, the ways you've been taught will be elimination and substitution. If you were really unlucky, you were taught graphically as well. I've got two more ways to do it in methods. That is matrices and using your CAS. And because this is a CAS course, we are going to use the CAS. Whoop, whoop. Uh, so first things first, uh, I'm a Casio Classpad user at this moment in time. Used to be a TI Inspire. Loved, loved, loved the TI Inspire. But if you will uh, excuse me for this moment, I will continue with my Casio Classpad. But the, the, the general idea is exactly the same. So loading up my screen, I notice I've got my main menu. So I'm gonna hit main to go into there and I'm gonna hit keyboard on my calculator. And what you'll notice is highlighted with a red arrow is a function where I can actually set up a series of equations to be solved. Now I can actually hit that button a number of times and it will add additional equations to help me solve it. But in this situation, I don't need four. So I'm gonna clear that and hit two. Now each of those boxes on the left hand side of that line mean put your equation in. Well, okay, I've got my equation given to me there as x minus five. So x minus five is equal to y. Go down to my second box and put my second equation in four y minus two x is equal to negative eight. And this second, this little box over here actually says, well, what letters or what pronumerals do you want me to solve for? And I'm gonna put an X and a comma and a Y and press equals and piff up poof, out comes X equals six and Y equals one. Beautifully easy. And this is just one of the best functions I could possibly think of at this moment for my calculator. So X equals six and Y equals one are my two solutions. But yes, unfortunately, we also have to know how to do this by substitution elimination. Why? Well, basically the next chapter has you doing it with literal equations. Sadly, there are no numbers. It's all algebra. And so being able to do this process is really, really important. Doing this by substitution uh, is lovely. Uh, being British and Australian get very confused with footy and soccer and, and the differences between the two. But the one thing I do know is they have something in common and that is substitution, where you take something off and put something in its place. Whoop whoop, thank you very much. So what I'm gonna do is I look at my first set of equations. I've got X minus five is equal to Y. Well, I'm gonna rewrite that to make life a little bit easier for me. And I know that Y therefore is equal to X minus five. And whenever they write these things the wrong way around, you have to wonder why. Y. The next one is 4y minus 2x is equal to negative 8. 
Looking at that, at that equation at the moment, obviously the reason I can't solve it, I've got two unknowns. I've got a y and an x. So to be able to solve this, I've got to get rid of that y. I've got to eliminate it or substitute it out. And that's where my top equation came in. Because I happen to know that for the one point where there's a solution, the y values are the same in both of those equations. And so if the y values are the same, I can substitute them out. Hence then, I can write that down as four, x minus 5, just substituted that y out, minus 2x is equal to minus 8. Why did I change pen color? I don't know. The moment took me. So what do I notice now? One equation with just x is in it. So multiply that out, it gives me 4x, minus 20, minus 2x is negative 8. Collect some like terms to give me 2x, minus 20 is negative 8. Oh, add 20 to both sides, it gives me 2x is equal to 12 and x is equal to 6, which is good because that's pretty much what I was expecting. Have I finished the question? Uh, no. I now need to take that value and put it back to find my value of y. And the great thing is we had my first equation said that y was equal to x minus 5. So y is equal to 6 minus 5. And so y is equal to 1. Sorry, that's substitution. Sometimes it's the easiest way to do it, uh, sometimes not. And I suppose the method you use in all of solving these equations is down very much to the question you're given. What about elimination? Ooh, elimination. Well, first things first, I'm gonna rewrite my equation again so that I have x minus y is equal to five and minus two x plus four y is equal to negative eight. Now the reason being is when we are doing elimination, we want all of our pronumerals to be in columns. And so we want the x's in one column, the y's in another column. The reason we want it in columns is to be able to eliminate, we're looking for the coefficient of one of those pronumerals to be the same. And in that situation, I have a coefficient in front of the x of one, and I have a coefficient in front of the x on the second equation is negative two. They're not the same, but I can make them the same. And the, re the way I can do that is multiply that top equation by negative two. Now, because Mr. White, my math teacher, always taught us to draw lines there, no idea why, it just sort of breaks up the workflow. I'm gonna multiply that top equation by negative two. So we get minus two x, plus 2y is equal to negative 10. And again, don't forget to multiply every single term. Copying down the next equation, minus 2x plus 4y is negative 8. And now I need to find a way to get rid of those uh, minus 2x's. Well, minus 2x minus minus 2x would add those two together. In which case, if I was to subtract those together, these would therefore eliminate. Oh, that's why it's called elimination. So knowing that, I'm going to subtract that top equation from the bottom equation. It doesn't actually matter. I can do the bottom equation, subtract the top. It just, it's fine. So again, Mr. White, thank you very much. Draw that line. So 2y minus 4y gives me minus 2y. And minus 10 minus minus 8 gives me minus 2. And yay, y works out to be 1. Have I finished? No. Need to continue and finish the question. Let's use the fact that we know that x minus y is equal to 5. So x minus 1 is equal to 5, so x must be equal to 6. Now again, this is a process, and in the next chapter you're going to need to know how to use that process. Solving worded problems, yes, another one of our nemeses. We've had fractions, now we've got worded problems. Uh, the thing is that this takes practice. Please don't think that there are geniuses out there, well, maybe the geniuses. Please don't think out that the average person out there is looking at these questions going, yeah, I know how to solve this, so, so easy, girlfriend. Again, don't know what that was all about. It takes practice. It's looking at each of these questions and going, okay, what information do I extract? What is it I'm looking for? Now looking at this question here, the length of a rectangle, so first things first, I see a rectangle, the question's talking about a rectangle, I'm going to draw said rectangle, is three centimetres more than the width. All right, if the length were to be decreased by four centimetres and the width increased by three centimetres, the perimeter would be 28. That seems important to me, I know perimeter. Now perimeter is that plus that plus that plus that of a rectangle. Calculate the dimensions of the rectangle, it wants both the length and the width. All right, so it hasn't given me a letter, it hasn't given me anything to call these sides, so I'm going to choose my own. So the first thing I'm going to say is, well, let the width be x, and that means that the length must be x plus 3. That's the information given to me here. The question then goes on and says, well, if the length were to be increased, uh, sorry, if the length were to be decreased by 4 centimeters, well, okay, so I'm going to subtract 4 from there, and the width increased by 3 centimeters, okay, so that now becomes x plus 3 the perimeter would be 28 centimeters. Well, awesome. So re-expressing that to give me that, that would be x minus one and x plus three. Now, perimeter is when you add them together. 
Lots of people, this is a distractor, will actually now multiply those together. Please don't, wrong answer completely. Uh, I just need to add them together. Or in fact, I need to add two lots of them together because remember, perimeter is that plus that, that plus that, add them together. So two lots of x minus one plus two lots of x plus three must give me 28. Right, so two x minus two plus two x plus six is 28. Uh, right, so 2x plus 2x is 4x, minus 2 plus 6 is plus 4, gives me 28. So take away 4 from both sides, give me 24, and so x must equal 6. And so that means that, and this is not the end of the question, remember the question says calculate the dimensions of the rectangle, so we would have to formally state that the width is 6 and the length was equal to 9. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for watching this. What was relatively basic, but it's going to build. It gets bigger as we go through the course. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, can you just uh, maybe click that little subscribe button, that doohickey? Um, let your friends know. It would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Have a good day.